hey, it's Wes. And today we have an exciting video. Why is it exciting? Because we're reviewing something that I thoroughly enjoyed using. And honestly, this is what keeps me going here with YouTube. It is the Mikey, or is it Mike? I'm gonna say Mikey. 50 millimeter, 1.2 for full frame. Let's hit it. What are we looking at here? Well, this is a DSLR native lens. As you can see, there is not much going on in the back end here. But this one is specifically for E-mount. You can get this for almost any mount of camera you want, though. In the past, I haven't looked at Mikey lenses much because generally they've been producing just the cheapest lenses that they can produce. I'm not complaining about that. There is a market for that, and that's the market they've been in. This, however, is not one of those. This is a wide aperture, tough as nails, full frame lens for E-mount. Did they have what it takes to step it up? Let's find out, starting with the categories, as always, the build quality. As you can see here, we have an all metal construction. The lens hood and lens cap, however, are not metal. The lens hood, I believe, is made of cheese. It is probably the cheapest feeling lens hood I've ever felt in my life. That's a shame. The back cap, likewise, just seems to be made of a cheaper plastic than the usual E-mount back cap. The uh, lens cap, though, it's pretty standard. Feels fine. Lens itself, very substantial, very metallic. The focus wheel is nicely knurled, if a little bit slippery. And the aperture wheel has knurls as well, but a big blank space here, unfortunately, that makes it a little harder to use. It is decently well dampened, not the best I've ever felt. And as you can see in the front here, the focusing is not internal. It comes out. As you might guess, there is no weather sealing for this lens. That loses a little bit of point there. We're looking at an 8 out of 10 for build quality. Handling and usability. We're in some very similar territory here. So let's talk more specifically about these parts attached to the lens. Number one, this back cap. It has an odd characteristic. With the other E-mount back caps, you can put it on as long as it falls into position, it'll go on. This one is much more particular. You have to get it in only one orientation. That's a pain in the butt. This lens hood, if you squeeze it too much, it doesn't like to come on or off because it's so squishy, you can lock it into place accidentally by squeezing it when you're turning it. It's easier if you just grab it by the side because then you don't deform it, but that should be unnecessary. And as is often the case, I do take issue with the aperture ring. Feels great, a little too smooth here, but the big problem is I can easily move the aperture ring and the focus ring at the same time. There is no lock, there is no clickable, declickable thing going on. Let's have a look over here at the TT Artisan 50 1.2. The aperture ring is completely smooth, incredibly tiny, a little bit easy to bump, but these clicks. Ah, oh, delightful clicks. And the clicks keep it from wandering around. The Mikey, however, has nothing to keep it from wandering around. And it's not the worst lens in this aspect that I've ever tested, I will grant you that. That would be the 7 Artisan 60 Mark II macro lens. This aperture ring, oh boy, it moves way too easy. This one here, you might use for, cin for cinematography, for videography, so I can see why they would want it to be declicked, but I want it to be declickable or have a lock or something. Just saves a lot of headaches. The lens itself is quite hefty, but on a full frame body is reasonably well balanced, especially for an f1.2 lens, it's actually pretty lightweight. Overall, I'm going to give that an 8 out of 10 for handling and usability. It is fairly delightful to use. Image quality. This is where we get most worried about lenses like this, these manual focus, somewhat cost-effective lenses. And honestly, this one does not disappoint too much. In the center of the frame, this lens stays very respectably sharp. Around the edges, it's always just a little bit disappointing, but with a wide aperture lens, you kind of expect that, especially with a lower priced one. So no surprises there. Honestly, the only surprise is, is that it's surprisingly good.
Where it comes to contrast, it's a little bit low contrast, not the worst I've seen. This lens hood, however, could be helping us out a lot more than it does. It seems smaller than it needs to be, but there's a reason for that. When we focus out all the way, because of the design of the lens, the front element shifts way back inside. And so, if you take that into account, the lens hood is actually larger than it appears to be. But then, when we focus all the way out, or rather all the way in to macro level, this lens hood becomes incredibly short. So it's not really great at resisting flaring or helping this thing to resist flaring. Overall, the lens handles flaring okay for a lens of this class. Compared to like a G Master lens, it's awful, but it's kind of what we expect or even want with a lens like this. We want to be able to do interesting things and play with light and flaring. And we're gonna talk about that more a little bit later when we talk about image character. When it comes to chromatic aberration, it is not super well controlled. It's not amazing, but again, I've seen worse in this class of a lens. We're developing a bit of a pattern here, aren't we? Overall, this sharpens up really nicely once you get past f2, f2.8. Honestly, I wouldn't even know that this is a manual focused lens by looking at the pictures. There is, however, an enormous amount of distortion. So overall, I'm gonna give that an image quality of seven out of 10. Not bad. If you want to see more and larger image samples, there's gonna be a link down in the description below that you can check out on my website. Just a quick note, 90% of you are not subscribed to my channel, and I'm trying to make a life out of this. And obviously I'm not right now, but I would like to in the future. So if you can hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that we can stay in touch and get things rolling a little bit better, that would be fantastic. Me and my cats would thank you. Image character. This is where we have high hopes about lenses like this, at least I do. You expect to have something interesting going on here. And do we? Yes, we do. I mean, you probably already knew that based on the image samples that we've shown already. This does not have quite a vintage look to it, but nor is it quite modern. It's kind of a blend, which is nice. The backgrounds can get a tiny bit nervous, but usually do not. The uh, bokeh, not always perfectly round. There's some onion ringing going on. But the lens flares, though not well controlled, are fantastic. I love the rings and the rainbows and it's just, it's beautiful. It doesn't have a lot of pop, not like uh, the 51.2 or even the Zeiss. Well, that's this lens right here, 55 1.8. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a lot of that, but it has a beautiful look to it. And when you get all the way open to F1.2, Although the lens isn't super sharp anymore, it has a delightful, smooth character to it. And then when you stop it down to like 1.8 to 2.8, you have some nice, slightly vintage inspired looks to it. I really, really like it. I'm gonna give that a nine out of 10 for character. I thoroughly enjoyed this lens. Autofocus, it has none. And this lens is compared on price and all performance aspects against autofocus lenses, so I have to give this a zero out of 10. These things tend to pick up a bit on character and on price though. So let's move right along from our zero and autofocus to value and see if we can win some points back here. So this Mikey 51.2 is $360, not bad. Mikey has one of their usual lenses, a 51.7 for $110. As I said before, they often make the cheapest lenses that they can make, and that is one of them. TT Artisan, they have a 51.4 at $235. Seven Artisans has a 51.05 for $490. Miticon, as we know for their Speedmaster lines, has a 50.95 for $800. And Voigtlander has a 51.2 for $1,000. Sony has their cheap 50 1.8 Plastic Fantastic for just $250. It costs less than this. So if you want autofocus, you can get it for less than this lens, but it's not a 1.2. And if we want to compare, you know, off the charts here, we've got Sony has 55 1.8 for $1,000 and they have 51.2 for $2,000. It's not who this lens compares to, but I actually think it is. This lens I would very much compare to the Sony 55 1.8. It's not as sharp, 
but honestly, it has a somewhat similar character to it and does the character game a little bit better, minus the 3D pop. So that is great. Overall, yes, you can get a cheaper 50mm lens, but you can't really get a cheaper 1.2. And a lot of those manual focus f1.8 and f2 lenses likely don't have the same image quality as this lens does, so I'm gonna have to give this a 9 out of 10 for value. When it comes to a full frame f1.2 lens, this is a fantastic bargain especially for the performance. So overall, that gives us a 41 out of 60. If you wanna see where that fits in in our uh, ranking scale, have a look at this chart right here. This is a lens that has particular flaws that produce beautiful images with fantastic character, and that's, that's why we get lenses like this, not to save money, but to get a particular look. If you liked the looks or didn't like the looks of this lens, let me know down in the comments below, and we'll talk about that. If you have any other questions or issues with this lens, let me know. Again, I'd love to chat. So, until next time. No clicks. Let's go take some photos.